Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about studying Masters in Robotics in US at Northeastern University. Joining us today we have Maheshwari who is currently studying as a graduate student at Northeastern and she will be sharing all the insights, tips and advice for those who want to pursue robotics in the US. Thank you so much for joining us today, Maheshwari. Can we start with an introduction? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about you? I'm Maheshwari Panchal. Uh, I've completed my undergrad in mechanical engineering from Dwarkala's J. Sangvi College of Engineering, Mumbai. After that, I was uh, placed at Last Man Tobro and I was working there as a senior design engineer for uh, two years. And uh, as L&D was more inclined towards automation, uh, I was... Uh, exposed to the automation that is being implemented in the manufacturing industry and that kind of ignited the spark and I was uh, interested in learning about robotics and how this automation is actually done. After that, I started applying for master's. I was placed at uh, Northeastern University. After going through a lot of discussion, I had finalized Northeastern University and my concentration is mechanical engineering. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that about you. And you know, coming from India, the thing is a master's in India or even undergrad is typically you have a bunch of courses and it's all set what course you're going to take in what semester. And in some semesters, you have the option of taking electives and choosing what courses you want. But when it comes to master's in the US, it's more of a credit system. And then there are options in terms of projects, thesis. Can you tell us a little bit more about this, especially for what it is at Northeastern University? Uh, so I joined Northeastern University in spring 22 and I've completed one semester now. So I can tell you in detail about this. The credit system here is each course is four credits and uh, to complete your master's you need 32 credits. So uh, there are three options that you have. You can go for either entirely coursework based course, project based program or a thesis based program. The project accounts for four credits uh, and the thesis accounts for eight credits. So if you're going for project, then along with four, you need to do, uh, you need to get 28 more credits. So you need to take your courses accordingly. And if you're going for thesis, then uh, that's eight credits. And then you need 24 more credits from your courses. Yeah, that's very interesting. And as you mentioned, the another thing is in the US, you can take as many credits per semester as you want. So in some semester, you can take more courses. In some, you can take less. But it does uh, play a role if you're an international student, then you have to maintain full-time status. And there's a minimum you have to take, but there's no maximum. So if you want, you can, you know, end up finishing your course a little faster than the typical two-year course, right? Yes. So at Northeastern, uh, like you can either go for a minimum of two courses per semester and the max you can take is three courses. Now, the courses at Northeastern are very intense and uh, like to handle three courses together also is like a cumbersome task for all the students. So generally, uh, like they go for like two courses and then put in all their efforts and then uh, maybe do the next, uh, the remaining courses in the coming semesters. So uh, a master's degree at Northeastern typically takes two years, uh, taking two uh, courses in each semesters. And uh, if you go for a co-op or an internship, uh, then that's adds, uh, that, that adds to the time of your master's. Nice. And I think that yeah. answered one of the questions that the audience had as well. What is the coursework like, especially studying in US coming from a country like India? Yeah, so you are familiar with this thing. Like when you sit and you know struggling with a code or something, then it, it you there is no end time to like how much time you will need to figure out how to uh, go around with this code. So it's just that you need to sit and struggle until you get the answer or the output that you need. Yeah, very well said. It's definitely more difficult especially because it's a master's course and the assignments mm -hmm. along with that you have to do household chores if you're doing part-time or if oh, you're working yeah. with a master, it all adds yeah. up <laughs> everything adds up very well said okay so let's also talk a little bit more about the kind of courses so as we mentioned it's kind of a mix of compulsory and electives and then can you tell a little bit more about the courses yeah sure so the masters in robotics at northeastern has three concentrations mechanical electronics and computer science so the way the uh, the structure works is there are uh, core courses and elective courses now each concentration has two core courses so like I have selected mechanical as my concentration. So I need to do compulsory, both the core courses from mechanical 
and then I can select one course each from the other two concentrations, uh, that is elect electrical and computer science. So I'll have four uh, compulsory courses and the remaining courses are like electives. So there are a list of electives from mechanical, electrical and computer science and you are free to choose as many electives from any concentration. So there is no limit on that. But it's just that uh, when it comes to core courses, you need to be specific to your concentration. That's actually pretty awesome. Yeah. And then are there any courses that you would recommend or any courses that you enjoyed so far and you're like, yeah, you should definitely check those out? Yeah, so like I am a person who loves practical knowledge and I've completed one semester. So I did two courses in that. Uh, both were my core courses. So the, the subject I really like was robotic sensing and navigation because it had a lot of labs, labs as in a lot of practical mini projects that we had to do. And uh, like that kind of introduced me to a lot of new uh, concepts, computer vision, image processing, and I was actually doing projects on those. It was very interesting to know how, uh, how everything works, like how the detectors are placed in an image and all of that. So it was pretty interesting to go in detail about that. Yeah, that's actually really good advice, especially if you're yeah. looking for a career as well. Because you've done projects and worked in lab with actual robots, you can put that on your resume and it looks really good. And you can tell someone that, hey, I have actually implemented this versus, hey, yeah, yeah I know how this works. Yes. And like you are supposed to write the entire program to code all your sensors and it, it's all on you. So like you can approach the TAs and the professors for any help you want. Every, everyone is very approachable. But it's just that you, uh, when you do it practically, you learn a lot more than just studying a subject theoretically. So I would really, uh, and this is also one of the core courses, I would really recommend uh, all the students to go for robotics and sensing and navigation. That's pretty awesome. And I think you kind of touched upon one of the other things that yeah. we wanted to talk about, that is assistantship. So now studying in US is very expensive, yeah. especially coming from countries like India when the exchange rate is not in our favor. And assistantships are actually a great yeah. way to get tuition remission. And for those who don't know, uh, college fees in US are called tuition fees. And then on top of that, you also get stipends. So basically, you're not paying anything to the university, but you're also getting... And you're also getting money to help with your living expenses and so on and so forth. So does uh, Northeastern offer these kind of assistantship, which is TA, RA or GA? Uh, yes, uh, Northeastern does offer RAs and TAs. But in most of the programs, the RAs are reserved for the PhD students. And when it comes to RAs, uh, you have an option of uh, getting your uh, getting getting the salary as a stipend or uh, like getting a waiver on your tuition uh, fees. So you can select either of one which is financially uh, favorable for you. Uh, but when it comes to TAs, uh, like all master's students can apply for TAs. And also like it's, uh, you, you need to, you know, approach a professor. It, it, is, uh, it is always recommended to get take a course with him so that uh, uh, he also knows how, uh, how dedicated you are in, in a particular course or like what's your interest, uh, like where, where does your interest lie? It's always good to take a course, get to know the professor, uh, like set a rapport with him. And then you, if you approach the professor, the chance of getting a TA is uh, higher. There are also job portals on which uh, the TAs, if, if there are any vacancies for TAs, they are uploaded on the uh, portals. That's pretty awesome. And also great advice. Take courses with those professors and that way you can build a good rapport. You can have a good impression. And trust me, most professors know when someone's a really good performer in class they're being active mm -hmm. they're actively participating and even if you don't get ta with that rapo you can ask if there's some research work you can do with them which is again great experience looks really good on your resume and it'll also help you figure out if this is an area of interest for you yeah like this is a very uh, good topic like I, I would like also like to touch upon this one uh, option that is available at uh, northeastern so northeastern has a very good uh, robotics lab and uh, in the robotics lab a lot of professors are working on a lot of projects so even if you don't get a TA, it is highly recommended that you be involved in one of those research that is going on uh, i guess in the initial years when you go, go to us for master uh, it is it is very expensive for us to handle all the expenses but uh, like since we are here to uh, focus 
focus on our studies also it is important to get a lot of research experience from the professors because the professors are so involved in, in a lot of different projects that it's it's you know very interesting to get to know all the aspects of a project that is going on uh, like in the university yeah very well said so now the next part apart from assistantships and working with professors is doing internships and co-ops for those of you who don't know co-op is basically while you're studying you are also working with a company and internship is you're not studying and you're only working with a company and usually it's during either summer or winter when you know schools not offering any courses now you have mentioned to me before that there's a dedicated course at northeastern to help with co-ops can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah uh, so as i mentioned earlier uh, northeastern has tie ups with a lot of uh, Uh, companies and uh, with that tie up uh, you can directly apply to the companies with a less uh, with a lesser competition uh, to say so northeastern has this workday portal via which you can apply for the internships in order to train the students for those internships north e- northeastern also has the uh, an introduction to co-op course so like that that helps you build your resume your linkedin profile if you if you meeting a recruiter then how would you carry on the conversation like so all the basic tips and tricks are uh, like discussed in those courses so it's it's a one credit course uh, but like uh, you should take it and it's it, and it's a compulsory course like once you've completed that introduction to co-op course and then you can start applying for the co-ops Awesome. It actually sounds very great. So now let's also talk a little bit more about what are the other ways to apply for internship, co-ops and full-time. One is definitely network, get those referrals and get the help. But are there any specific job portals as well as are there any career fairs at Northeastern which will help with applying to jobs? So yeah, uh, Northeastern has a very, very, very diverse community and each community has a... Uh, Uh, has different career fairs, uh, so it arranges different career fairs, and uh, like it's open for all the northeastern students, and you can walk into the uh, fairs and uh, network with the recruiters, like talk to them about the available positions and talk with them about your uh, in, uh, your interest, uh, share your resume, and all that uh, options are available. So there are a lot of career fairs. and uh, the other way is uh, linkedin and glassdoor that's pretty awesome and i'll also link the job portal that she mentioned in the description along with any other resources and links that are mentioned throughout this conversation yeah. all right time for my favorite question so what advice would you have for students who are coming to the us as international students wanting to study robotics at northeastern university so one advice for uh, specifically for students uh, like who are moving to this new country uh, to make their career or to even to study we feel the cultural uh, difference in the way cultural and the educational difference also in the way the system was back in our country so talking about india uh, the structure there is very teacher centric uh, whereas when you come to the us it is very student centric so it's all on you what you can take out from the courses you need to uh, design your entire degree you need to select the courses where your interest lies you need to network with the professors you need to do some be involved in some research like be involved in the co- in the co curricular activities also apart from all this you have some household chores and all also that you have to manage so many times it becomes very cumbersome for a student to go through this entire process and to to handle everything alone so like northeastern also has counseling sessions anything any doubts you have like you can you can firstly approach your faculty advisor if it's anything more specific to your courses if you're not able to you know handle the low workload then you can talk to your prof- so if you are struggling with an assignment you can go to your tas you can talk to your colleagues like everyone is very open to discuss the issues that you have so no one is like belittling someone that uh, you know like you don't even know this much or something like that kind of attitude is not there so you can be more uh, open about the things that you are not uh, able to understand and uh, you know that will ignite the conversation and maybe that's how you can start your networking yeah very well said that coming from different countries it may be a very different style of education that you are used to in us it's all on you that being said as she mentioned there are a lot of resources available to you make sure to use those resources you've paid for them so make sure to utilize them 
so that it will benefit you and help you in your career and thank you so much maheshwari for doing this for sharing your experience and giving tips to everyone i'll include all the links that she's mentioned in the description and once again thank you so much it really means a lot it's always a pleasure talking to you thank you